this is the problem with the take it easy generation that we're living in the take it easy mentality the seeking balance mentality i'm not saying like be so lopsided that you're just making all this money but you're massively out of shape and that you have eroded your relationships and you're mentally distraught but by god the take it easy mentality some of you have drunk from that well far too long Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. What up, everybody? This is the BK Show, the Bedros Coolian Show. My name is Bedros Coolian, and this particular episode was actually inspired by an Instagram post that I had put up. And on that Instagram post, I think I talked about I've got this weird belief system that, um, you know, if you hit the snooze button first thing in the morning, that you are setting yourself up to lose the rest of the day. And we'll get to that in a moment. But I, this episode, this show, this topic is a long time coming, and I'm gonna to explain to you why. Seems to me that people are starting to get easier and softer on themselves. It's almost like people want to have a cop out against doing the work that's required to achieve the life that they want and need. And so the other day I had put up a post on the old Instagrams and the post was something to the effect of, you know, I believe that if you want to have a great reputation with yourself, in other words, if you want confidence, because if you're wondering, confidence is just reputation with yourself. Like if you want good confidence, like, hey, how do I have great confidence? You just need good reputation with yourself, right? Think about it. If, if I don't trust you, that means I don't have confidence in you. That means you uh, might have a bad reputation. And so if you want to build your own confidence to a high level, then you've got to start building a better reputation with yourself. And so that reputation is a byproduct, I said on that post, of keeping the promises to yourself, right? So think of it, about it this way. Every night when we go to sleep, right before bed, most of us, set our alarm for the next morning. In other words, we're making a promise to ourselves that I'm gonna wake up at a certain time. And you're setting that alarm based on the things that you have to do that day that will help you move towards your goals in life, right? I mean, otherwise you wouldn't set an alarm, you would just say, hey, fuck it, I'm gonna wake up whenever and do whatever. But I'm guessing if you're setting an alarm, it's because you have shit to do. And the shit that you have to do is going to either take you closer to your goals or further away from your goals. Now, I can't imagine anybody would wake up and just do dumb shit like screen sucking off their social media and then wasting time and then eventually getting around to something. So odds are you're listening to a show like this. You're probably a high performer and you want to achieve more in life. And so you set that alarm that whatever time, like in my case, I set my alarm for 530 a.m., and then when that alarm goes off, I never hit the snooze button. In fact, I don't even have a snooze button on my iPhone. I turned off that feature. It's a feature that you can turn off on your phones. Some of you didn't know that. But what's cool about that is that now I can keep the promise that I made myself the night before, that I'm going to wake up and then drink my 30 ounces of water because Sean Stevenson said so. Sean Stevenson wrote a great book called Eat Smarter, followed that up with Sleep Smarter. Actually, it was the other way around. Sleep Smarter came out first and then Eat Smarter came out second. Anyway, he's got a great show. Shout out to uh, Sean, the Model Health Show. And um, look, he's a dear friend and he's a scientist. And when that dude says, first thing in the morning, you wanna drink 30 ounces of water because your brain requires a lot of water. And when you're sleeping at night and you're breathing, you are dehydrating yourself. You want your brain to function well. Awesome, man. I don't hit the snooze button. I believe that one action helps me build a greater amount of confidence and reputation with myself because immediately I kept a promise to myself. And now I stacked a W a win instead of an L. Had I hit the snooze button, that means I broke the promise to myself. I've now become untrustworthy and unreliable. My conscious, my subconscious mind says that I've got bad reputation with myself and that I am not worthy of greater success in achieving my ambitions and dreams, right? And so if you just look at it that way, 
then it makes sense to not hit the snooze button. And so that's what I really said on this post. And of course, some asshole decides that, hey, bro, that sounds a little extreme. Why don't you like take it easy? What's wrong with sleeping in a little bit? And I'm going to tell you what's wrong with sleeping in a little bit. Like this is the problem with the take it easy generation that we're living in, the take it easy mentality, the seeking balance mentality. I'm not saying like be so lopsided that you're just making all this money, but you're massively out of shape and that you have eroded your relationships and you're mentally distraught but by god the take it easy mentality some of you have drunk from that well far too long right and the way i look at it is in all of life man we could either be a crop duster or a fighter jet and i talk about this in my book man up and i talk about that the fighter jet is someone who is definitive in their life they have an idea of what their purpose is what their calling is and they they work towards those goals every day. Yeah, some days you'll achieve more towards those goals and some days you'll achieve less towards your goals, but every day you're making forward momentum towards your goals. That is the fighter jet mentality. You're type A and you're, and you're, you're action oriented and you have this proclivity to lean into action, right? And then the take it easy generation, like, hey bro, take it easy, what's wrong? Why, why can't you just relax a bit? Hit the snooze button, get your 10 to 20 minutes of extra sleep. I'll tell you why, man, because you just made a promise to yourself the night before, and then now you're hitting the snooze button, and then all of a sudden, you tell your subconscious mind that I'm a loser, that I came and keep my own promise to myself, and subconsciously, you end up making a string of bad decisions all day long. Whereas for me, I don't hit the snooze button, and a lot of the high performers that I know don't hit the snooze button, and because of that, I get up and I dominate my day, man. I get up and I drink my 30 ounces of water. And then I send out my three gratitude text messages to three people that I love and that I respect and that I have great gratitude for and appreciation for that maybe helped me out in my path in life. Because I know that sometime throughout the day, those three people are going to respond back via text and tell me how awesome I am and how thankful and grateful they are for that message. And I know, I can tell you this, I've been doing this for over almost 10 years now sending out three gratitude text messages a day. And when I do, more often than not, people are like, man, I needed to hear that. Things haven't been going well for me today and I needed to hear that. Thank you so much for being a, a, a light, shining a light in my life. And I'm like, dude, you're welcome. So at least three times a day, I get positive affirmation if the rest of my day went to shit, right? And because I kept my promise to myself, I'm more likely to stack more wins. So now I've had my 30 ounces of water. I sent out my three gratitude text messages. And then... I listen to my favorite channel on Spotify. For me, it's a Jack Johnson channel. It's very chill and I'm listening to Jack Johnson as he's serenading me as I'm showering. And, and then I go downstairs and I turn off Jack Johnson, have my coffee, my protein shake, and I'm working on my laptop on my GSD list. You see how I just keep stacking wins? And then by 9 a.m. I'm headed to my gym. And again, I'm stacking wins. By the time I get to HQ at 11 o'clock, I am ready to dominate my day all because I chose not to hit the snooze button. But what if I decided that I should just take it easy today and, and let myself sleep in for an extra 10, 15, 20 minutes? Well, maybe I only drink half of my water. Maybe I decide to cut, cut corners because I don't have time and not send out those three gratitude text messages, right? Because you gotta make up that you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes from somewhere. And then maybe, just maybe, I'm like, you know what? I'm only going to finish the top three things on my GSD list, get shit done list, and I'm not going to do the last two. I'll get around to it tonight. And maybe I'm going to skip my workout. Or if I go do a workout, it might be a half-assed workout. You see how all of a sudden the day has gone to shit. And what would be the formula for a productive, efficient, profitable day that would leave me fulfilled has now been a day of chaos of feeling behind the eight ball of anxiety of incongruency feeling like a hypocrite because how the hell am i going to call myself a leader and put an optimistic post on social media try and help the world try and move my companies ahead when i was so weak and gave into the temptation of hitting that goddamn snooze button right and so in life we could either operate as a fighter jet and have definitiveness or we could be a crop duster and really just go, well, what do I feel like doing? I feel like taking it easy because make no mistake about it, man. Every morning I feel like hitting the snooze button. Every morning I feel like scrolling through social media first before I drink my water or send out my gratitude text messages. But it is the consistency of discipline that leads me to winning in life. 
I'm not any smarter than anyone else. I don't have any more emotional intelligence than anyone else. What I do have is consistency of things that have a high proclivity for me to win, right? And so if I do the things that are designed to win over and over again, then I'm more likely gonna end up with the win. And make no mistake about it, I have some days that I just feel like I got run over even though I did everything right on my part. And even though on those days where I feel like the world shat on me, guess what? I got three text messages that came in that told me how awesome I am and how thankful they are that I sent them a gratitude text message. So you see how even on your worst day, by sending out those three gratitude text messages, you get three different points of light of people telling you that they thank you, they appreciate you for thinking of them. And so I'm here to challenge you. If you have this take it easy mentality, can you consider being a little harder on yourself? Can you stop letting yourself off the hook? I know it's easy to let yourself off the hook to make an excuse. And this goes back to the first episode that we talked about of the BK show where we start listening to that inner critic and that inner critic says, well, you didn't sleep well at night. You know, you, you tossed and turned all night. You had those nightmares. Of course you should sleep in a little longer. Hit that snooze button. You know, you can do the workout after work instead of before work, but you know that there's a routine to winning. Your winning routine has a pattern. Each time you repeat that pattern, it becomes a discipline. And if you break that discipline, you're more likely to lose. So I'm asking you, what if you tossed and turned all night, but you still got up anyway? What if you didn't sleep well, but you still got up anyway? What if you were harder on yourself? What if you set higher expectations for yourself? What if you raised the standards for yourself? And then what if, what if you could stop surrounding yourself with people who subscribe to the take it easy mentality? And that's really the gist of this episode, is that oftentimes I see people who are cut out to be fighter jets and they are surrounded by crop dusters. And I'm gonna tell you a story about that. Back in 2005, we were broke. I had uh, gotten married in 2003. Um, we had spent, whatever, a decent amount of money, maxed out credit cards to have a wedding. I highly don't recommend that. I wish I can go back and give myself advice on that. But nevertheless, we had maxed out credit cards to have a wedding. We barely were able to buy a house. And here we are two years later in 2005, my wife's family's like, hey, we're going to Alaska. I'm like, man, I can't afford Alaska. Thank you, you guys have a good trip. Me and the wife, we're gonna, we're gonna hang out here in Chino Hills. They go, no, 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 the trip's paid for. Well, I'm like, shit, the trip's paid for. I'm definitely going to Alaska because I heard those cruise ships have all you can eat food and a gym and that's all I need. I'm gonna eat a shit ton of food, Ed, and then I'm gonna work out like a donkey. By the way, if any of you have ever done like a bench press on a ship that's like going over waves, even if they're just small waves, it is the craziest thing, man. You go from like flat bench to decline to incline all in the same one repetition, that's bananas. Um, this is a whole new modality of training. But anyway, so there we are in beautiful Ketchikan, Alaska. The cruise ship pulls into this beautiful harbor and we're watching the, 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 the glaciers as they calve and then boosh, they fall into the water and they splash up all this water. And then now the cruise ship docks and then we get off and we're walking around. And we're walking along the, um, the rocks there and we're seeing there's these crab fishermen. They're like casting out a net and then they'll wait a while and they pull their net in. And then sometimes they might have like a crab or two in it. And other times they have nothing in their net. And so they cast their net again into the ocean and hope they caught a crab. Well, this one gentleman had this five gallon paint bucket, right? And he had, I don't know, probably five or six crabs in there, each one the size of my hand. And um, he had the lid off. So there's some water in the bottom of this, this, this bucket. And then he had the lid off the bucket and he's casting his net. And I'm looking at the bucket of crabs and I see this one ambitious crab, undoubtedly the fighter jet crab, crawling on top of all the rest. And he's starting to reach up towards the rim of the bucket. Clearly this crab is trying to make a getaway. Like it's obvious to me, this crab is trying to escape the bucket. So being a good Samaritan, I'm like, hey, Mr. Fisherman, your crab's about to get away. Without even turning around, 
to look at me. He goes, watch what happens next. And all of a sudden, this little ambitious crab that's like starting to hoist itself up gets pulled down by all the other crabs at the bottom of the bucket. They reach up and pull it down, right? And in that moment, I realize, holy shit, I have these type of crabs in my life. Like I have crabs in my life who I tell them my dreams and my ambitions, and they're like, dude, you didn't go to college. How are you gonna run a company? You didn't go to college. You don't know anything about software. How are you gonna own a software thing? You didn't, you didn't understand, you're not even a certified personal trainer. How are you gonna open up a gym, right? And so they were the crabs in my life who were constantly doubting me, who were constantly hating on me, who were constantly, putting in this like fear of excellence within me. They were the crop dusters to my fighter jet. And I realized in that time that if, if we were to go to war, would we ever take a crop duster in a squadron of fighter jets? Probably not, because that crop duster is not equipped to go to war. It does not have the speed. It does not have the resiliency. It does not have the weaponry to do what needs to be done in battle. Yet you might have this mindset of ambition, of being and doing more in life, of making more money and, and you know being that one to break the generational financial curse in your family, yet you put yourself around people who are of the take it easy mindset, find the balance mindset, the crop duster mindset, these motherfuckers who will watch television all weekend long rooting for their quote unquote team. It's like, motherfucker, you don't own that baseball team, that basketball team, the football team, yet you know all their stats, but you won't get your fat ass up and make a social media video where you can add value and then give people a call to action to slide into your DMs to be able to serve them in some capacity where you will have a greater sense of fulfillment because that is what consciousness wants from you right? Like we all know what the right thing is, but it's easy to adopt a take it easy mindset and then succumb to balance. But there's no one that I know that takes it easy or has balance and lives a lifestyle of freedom. There just simply isn't. Everyone that I know sets themselves up for higher expectations. Everyone that I know who's successful and happy and fulfilled and, and making a massive amount of impact and income and inspiring others, they have higher standards of expectations. Everyone that I know who is doing well surrounds themselves with other hard workers and everyone that I know is harder on themselves and it is okay to be hard on yourself. I'm not saying like beat yourself up to the point where you just feel defeated and you feel like a piece of shit, but like be hard on yourself, man. If you set the goal to make 10 sales calls today and the day ended and it's Friday and you only got to seven, be hard on yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to keep calling until I get to 10 because my higher self demands this of me. My higher self doesn't want me to take it easy. My higher self wants me to make more money and to create more experiences and security for my family. My higher self, the fighter jet within, has a different set of expectations than the crop dusters that I hang out with. And my suggestion to you, my friends, is to consider eliminating and editing the crabs or the uh, crop dusters out of your life. That's it. And when you begin to edit and eliminate the crabs and the crop dusters out of your life, I would rather be a solo fighter jet than have a, have a team of crop dusters around me who are just constantly mediocre at best. Because when I became a solo fighter jet, soon I started to link up with other fighter jet minded people. And soon we became a squadron and soon we started businesses together and masterminds together and put on events together. And soon I had friends who thought like me and soon I saw that I was more competitive now, right? Because when you're hanging out with higher performing humans, you are more competitive. You're hanging out with higher performing humans. You want to level up more. You know, the tide raises all ships, but if you're hanging around with low tide people, then you're going to be a low tide motherfucker. So that's my challenge to you, my friends. Stop taking it easy and giving yourself an out and become harder on yourself. And when you do, you will achieve greater levels of success, greater levels of fulfillment, and greater levels of happiness. And with that comes a tremendous amount of security and future generational wealth 
And really that's what life's about, man, to be able to help people and take care of people and, and do good things. And that only happens when you decide to be hard on yourself, set higher expectations and lean into the fighter jet within and tell all the fucking crop dusters around you to go fuck themselves. All right, friends, hope you enjoyed this episode. I know you did. Give us an awesome review. Please share this on all the social media platforms and I'll see you on the next episode.